I am out of my depth <laughs> a little bit, or I just strongly disagree. And I don't have the mental or emotional bandwidth to carry this conversation on. And you know what, that's, that's okay. Look, right, we're all, we're worker advocates. We want the best work. Workers deserve more, right? This is, this is kind of our shtick. Uh, but workers are people, and sometimes people are crazy. Like, they are weird. Pe sometimes people can be weird, right? Sometimes they can stir up stuff that really make you, uh, uh, that, that can <laughs> really cause issues in a campaign. Uh, you know, a toxic coworker who is drama all the time, keeps petty interpersonal stuff stirred up a snitch um what about when the toxic person is a steward or a building rep or an officer or a, you know somebody on the organizing committee how do we deal with conflict between workers between union members um and johnny you've been quiet for a little bit so i'll i'll throw it to you for a first uh thank you um yeah i feel like uh it could definitely speak to this because in our ongoing union campaign, we have a very, very vocal um, anti-union uh, faction within our company. And dealing with them has been um, just an exercise in patience and understanding because you don't want to alienate your coworkers. Um, these are people that I still have to work with. Some of them I've mm. even called my friends at some point. And so, you know, always trying to, um, in the back of my mind, I always say, I'm trying to remember that, you know, I work with them, I respect them, or even, you know, I may love some of my friends. Um, and that once we move past this, we'll still have to work together. So that's like my uh, broad answer, but directly, and I'm just going to be honest with you. Sometimes you're just going to have to let some people go and move on. You might not be able to convince people that they need a union or their views just may be so opposed or bizarre that you're like, this is not going anywhere. I've had to let some conversations um, go. They've gone into QAnon, conspiracy, theory, <laughs> territory. And I'm just like, you know what? No, I am out of my depth <laughs> a little bit, or I just strongly disagree. And I don't have the mental or emotional bandwidth to carry this conversation on. And you know what? That's that's okay. And I right. think you do yourself better service as an organizer when you say, this conversation is, isn't going to work. I may not be able to save this person. I can save the next person. And then another tactic that I use and that we use... Um, Every organizer has a Slack or Discord or something like that, WhatsApp. Um, I suggest someone else talk to them. Someone mm -hmm. at the company speaks their language. And at in a work group that has over 20-something thousand flight attendants in it, we're not all going to be the same. I'm very fortunate that I have a friend circle that um, somewhat believes the similar things that I do, but not all of my coworkers do. So in that case, I'm going to say, hey, you know what? You seem to be on the same wavelength as, the, as this person. Maybe you should try to talk to them. Maybe you can mm. speak their language and see um, if you all can come to some type of meeting ground or terms or just, you know, progress them from wherever they are in um, whatever organizing conversation that you're having. But we have our snitches. We have people who are looking at our Facebook accounts to see what we said in 2015 and who are reporting us to the company. And I just have to think that, you know, I'm trying to save them from themselves, you know, yeah, I know it's a hero thing or whatever, and that may not be the best way to come at it. But if they're doing that, that means that there's something going on with them personally in their lives. It's not my job to dig it out or, you know, find out what it is. I just have to let them do that and continue on with my organizing and forming a union because that is the goal. And we're just going to save them um, from whatever negative negativity and nonsense that they're doing and not let it um derail the campaign but you know what uh, just you can't take on every single person you just yeah. can't it's impossible exactly yeah does anybody else have anything they want to add to that 
Yeah, I wanted to talk about, so, so far we've been talking about um, what it means to speak to people who are like at the level of um, yes, union, no union, or like, I'm not in a union, I am in a union. Um, one thing that's come up over the past few years, and especially as I've become more involved, not just in my unit's politics, but in UAW national and regional politics, um, is also interpersonal conflict and interpersonal forms of harm that happen amongst union members um, and how you manage that in maintaining your professional relationship that you have with these like colleagues and like union mm -hmm. colleagues, like not even just work colleagues, but union colleagues um, and confronting it and addressing it while also maintaining that relationship. Um, specifically, I think what comes to mind for me um, is sexism and racism as they are present. If they're present in society, that means they're present in unions. If, and so um, within the UAW, um, like just a month ago at our conference um, at the UAW Constitutional Convention, I was mistaken for a different person who's of a different ethnic brown background but who is also like an outspoken woman of color. Um, and this has happened even before the conference, after the conference, like we just get mixed up all the time. And even though this is a microaggression, um, it's actually been a useful teaching experience to talk to my UAW brother, siblings, brothers and sisters, which is like a language that's really common in the UAW, um, and talk about these subtle things that like, it's actually really important that you don't mix me up with my friend. I love her. I'm honored to be mistaken for her. She's beautiful. But what I also hear when you say that is that you're not paying attention to like our, each of our individuality or like, you know, something else that came up is realizing that um, some of the auto workers um, who are men would go around and shake the hands of everybody there and then would assume that the women present were partners or wives and mm. not um, in the UAW themselves, or like just not like literally not even speak to them, right? Um, and as the UAW grows, as it moves into other sectors, and also ha as capitalism changes, as it has historically and has it will continue to do, like women and non-binary people have a role in the labor movement, and you just like can never make an assumption about why someone is there. And so those have been difficult conversations. Um, there's also like conversations about reform and what the role of a union is like is it a service union is it a business union this is like union 201 so we could get into that at another level at another time but to have that conversation about like conflict within a union and like you might disagree with someone about this political strategy but you can't use interpersonal harm as a way to address that so like another instance came up where someone was you know offering a case, you know, in favor of like business unionism and the caucus that I was a part of, which is more rank and file unionism, was using language that just like came down to ad hominem attacks that also aligned with like historical um, massage noir, right? And that's just wrong. And it's like mm. not okay. And so finding ways to say, we're going to keep this at the level of political strategy and political difference and not let the things that plague our society also plague like our the way that we manage conflict in our union like that felt really it feels important to say because harm happens like conflict is going to happen it's how we choose to approach it and resolve it exactly yeah it, it's important to um you know it's important to recognize that yeah there's gonna people are gonna have differences and and uh there's a there is a uh, correct, like there, there's a proper way to have dis disagreements, political disagreements that that doesn't uh, resort to those types of things. You just saw a clip from the Valley Labor Report. We are live every Saturday morning from 9:30 a.m. till 12:30 p.m. and we pride ourselves on keeping all of our content free 
to everybody so that we can talk to as many working folks as possible. If you support the work that we're doing, you think that it's important, you think that it's good, then consider making a monthly contribution to the project, and you can do that on our website, tblr.fm.